Okay, on this last one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing decimals. So uh, removing decimals is also handy, especially if you are not having a calculator handy. So uh, it's not quite as important as removing fractions, but it's still a good thing to know how to do. So um, what I do is multiplying by a power of 10 will move a decimal. And to pick which power of 10, just count up which uh, number has the most decimals. So since this has two decimal places, I need to multiply by 100 because 100 has two zeros. Now remember, multiplying by 100 just adds zeros. So x times 100 is 100x. And 1.2 times 100, I would move the decimal one, two places. So that would be minus 120. And then 0.25 times 100, move the decimal one, two places is 25x. So that's why I picked 100 because I knew it would move the decimal two places and get me what I needed to have. Now generally what I do is I subtract the positive x's because I don't like creating negatives when I don't have to. And it's okay for everything to cancel out on this side temporarily. I'm going to have 75x minus 120 equals zero. It's time to get my picture out of the way so we can keep solving this problem. Then I'm going to add 120 to both sides because I have to get this x term by itself. So once I've added 120 to both sides, I have a 75x equals 120. And then for my last step, I divide off my coefficient. Now in this case, 120 divided by 75 will reduce. Uh, I can divide both of them by 5. So 5 goes into 12 two times. I'm going to put this up here. 5 goes into 12 uh, two times with 2 left over. 5 goes into 24 times. So I have a 24 over 15. Now, if I have a 24 over 15, I notice both of those can divide by 3 again. The way I know that is 2 plus 4 is 6, which divides by 3. 1 plus 5 is 6, which divides by 3. So both of those numbers divide by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So your final answer is 8 fifths. Took me a little bit of time to reduce. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, try these down at the bottom of the screen about when the variables disappear. So when my variables disappear, um, that you're going to have some problems where as you solve them, the variables will kind of vanish on you. So let's just look at the, these examples. Uh, you can multiply the 2 through there. So you'd have a 2x plus 5 equals 2x plus 1. Subtract 2x from both sides. And I'm going to be left with a 5 equals 1. My variables did disappear on me. And this is a false statement. This is not true. So that means my answer is that there is no solution. That means no matter what number I pick for x, nothing will make that equation work. Uh, so that's how you do that if the variables disappear. On this next one, we'll go ahead and try it. We can multiply the 2 through. To simplify this side, 5 plus 2x minus 2. On the other side, I can multiply the 3 through. So that gives me a 3x plus 3 minus x. Might be helpful to draw the line to keep our two sides separate. I still can simplify each one by combining some like terms. So 5 minus 2 is 3, so I have 3 plus 2x. You could also write that as 2x plus 3 if you wanted. I can put my x's together, 3x minus. Remember, this is an understood 1, so 3x minus 1x is 2x. And now uh, both sides are simplified, and I'm ready to get the variables together. Well, to get the variables together, I need to subtract 2x from both sides. And then I get 3 equals 3. The variables have disappeared on me again, but this time it is a true statement. And since it is a true statement, my answer is that there are infinitely many solutions. What infinitely many solutions means is that there are just a host of numbers. Practically any number you think of in this case will be a solution of this equation. So infinitely many solutions means I could plug in a 2, a 1, a 0, a negative 5, negative 10, just hundreds and thousands and an infinite number of solutions, all kinds of different solutions to this. On 